Hello everyone, we're going to find the interval convergence of the sum n equals 1 to infinity of x minus 1 to the n on n as seen here. So the first thing to note is the centre. So the centre of this interval is 1. We know this because there's a minus 1 just here and the centre is the opposite sign to whatever is next to the x. So say it was x plus 1 to the n, the center would be minus 1, but it's x minus 1 to the n, so the center is 1. It's just like this opposite rule thing. So to find the interval of convergence, we need to use the ratio test. So it's a similar method to finding the radius of convergence of a function, of a series. So we need to take the limit, n tends to infinity, of a to the n plus 1 divided by a to the n less than 1, where this is a n. Righty. So first, a n equals x minus 1 to the n on n, as stated just there. Yep. So a to the n plus 1 equals x minus 1, that doesn't change because there's no n value, to the n plus 1 because we're adding a value to n divided by n plus 1. So what we need to do, let's flip my book, I've got that. First we need to take the limit n tends to infinity of a to the n plus, sorry, a to the n plus 1. So it's x minus 1 to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1, which is a n plus 1, times this one flipped. So it's n on x minus 1 to the n, less than 1. Alrighty, so we can cross out some values here. So limit n tends to infinity. This can be broken up into x minus 1 to the n, x minus 1 to the 1. See there was n plus 1 here, now it's x minus 1 to the n times x minus 1 to the 1, divided by n plus 1, times n divided by x minus 1 to the n, less than 1. Alrighty, so the x minus 1 to the n, both gone. So what we're left with is limit n tends to infinity of x minus 1 n divided by n, n plus 1, less than 1. Alrighty, so this just leaves us with absolute value x minus 1 because we can just pull this out of the limit because it's got no n value so it doesn't matter whether it's in the limit or out of the limit so we still got the limit here alrighty so this limit can look a bit tricky because you think that the bottom is actually bigger than the top technically it is but when you actually think about it it's not say we're going to put n is in a million or so a million divided by a million plus one, it's pretty close to one. Make that even higher, say one billion, one billion divided by one billion plus one. The higher you go, as n goes to infinity, the largest number, this one is actually quite insignificant now. So this actually just equals one. So what we have left is x minus one less than 1. So, that's what we've got. That's what we've got, right? So, to get the endpoints, we go take the negative of x minus 1, less than 1, and then take the positive of x minus 1, less than 1. So we break the absolute value up into two different sections. So we've got x less than, bring this guy over, 1 plus 1, so x is less than 2. Yep. 
we can get rid of this negative by taking it over to this side. So what have we got? We've got x minus 1 greater than negative 1. Because remember, if we times or divide by a negative, the sign of the inequality, the direction of the inequality changes. So now we've got x is greater than negative 1 plus 1, which is just 0. So x is greater than 0. So as seen, x is less than 2 but greater than 0. Now if we think about that, what's the middle point of this guy between 0 and 2? The middle point is 1, which is what we predicted up here with our center as 1, which is quite good because then we know that we're right, you know. It gives us some reassurance as we're going along. Alrighty, so we've got the interval, right, down here. But how do we know that 0 and 2 are actually convergent at that point? How do we know that the series is convergent at that point? So we actually have to test it. So the way we test it, sorry, the way we test it is sub x equals 0 into the original equation and sub x is 2 into the original equation. So let's do that on the next page. Alrighty, so our, our original series was sum infinity n equals 1 of x minus 1 to the n divided by n. There we go. That's our original series. And we've got x equals 0 and x equals 2 are our endpoints. We've got to check if they're convergent or divergent because it is the interval of convergence. That's what we're finding. So if we sub 0, what do we get? We get sum infinity n equals 1, 0 minus 1 to the n on n, which is sum infinity n equals 1 of negative 1 to the n on n. Alrighty, and we know this is actually convergent due to the alternating series test. Alrighty, I actually will do this series and the alternating series test to prove that this is convergent, but for the sake of this question, we're just going to say it's convergent that we know that. So you can go watch the other video if you want to know why that's true. Now we've still got the 2 to test. We've still got the 2 to test. So we've got sum infinity n equals 1 of 2 minus 1 to n on n which is sum infinity n equals 1, 1 to the n on n. And anything to, a 1 to the power of anything is just 1. So this is just sum infinity n equals 1, 1 on n. Alrighty, so this is called the harmonic series. Quite popular series. If you're studying a series, this is a key one to remember. So it's the harmonic series. And we know this one is actually divergent. So what does this say about the interval? It means that the interval is between 0 and 2. It includes 0, but it excludes 2. So technically, x is less than 2 and greater than or equal to 0. Or in interval terms, which is how we should write our final answer, interval, oh and this is therefore by the way, this is mathematical notation, therefore, quite handy in, rather than writing therefore all the time, of convergence equals 0, 2. These squarey brackets, if you ever see these, or the curl brackets, the square brackets are used if the uh, it includes that point. The round brackets means it doesn't include that point. So it's convergent between 0 and 2, including 0 and excluding 2, as, as stated. Thanks for watching.